Okay, 6 o'clock is here. Then I will call to order the Beale Early Childhood Center Building Committee meeting. It will meet remotely on Tuesday, July 28th, 2020 at 6 p.m. to consider the following agenda. Important notice pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 30A, Subsection 18. And the governor's March 15th through 20, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Beale Early Childhood Center Building Committee will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. All meetings and hearings listed on the agenda will also be done so that through remote participation. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town's website at www.shrewsburymath.gov forward slash coronavirus period for this meeting members of the public who wish to listen or watch the meeting may do so by dialing 1-347-554-7479 and entering the following pin 721-032 987 pound or visiting www.shrewsburymediaconnection.org. No in person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the town's website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. We have called the meeting to order for six o'clock. I'll now ask for, excuse me, I will now ask that we go through a roll call to see who is present this evening. Mr. Cox? Present. Mr. Baldinger? Present. Mr. Mizikoff? Present. Mr. Girardi? Present. Ms. Fritz will not be with us this evening. Dr. Sawyer? Present. Mr. Collins? Present. Ms. Boucher? Present. Here we go. And Mr. Kane, I'm here. Also uh, present, Deb Scher? Hello, yes. Deb? Yes, present, sorry, right. yes. Right. No, that's fine. Walter Hartley, CMA consultant? Present. Frank Payer? Present. Katie Crockett? A representative of Lamoureux Pagano? Sean running here. Sean, good evening, Sean. Thank you very much. First item is to review the meeting minutes of June 9, 2020. Are there any comments, questions, amendments? If there are make any, could I have a motion? Sure, make a motion to approve the minutes of the June 9th meeting. Second. Motion to remain seconded. All those in favor shall so signify by saying aye. Aye. This will aye. call, uh, as, with, uh, as with proceedings under this uh, current operating model, we will now call a roll call to secure a uh, vote from each member. Mr. Cox. Yes. Mr. Baldinger. Yes. Mr. Mizika. Yes. Mr. Girardi. Yes. Dr. Sawyer. Yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Ms. Boucher. Yes. Mr. Kane, aye. Moving on to the next item is a project financial documentation review. 3A, review and act on the following Fontaine Brothers Incorporated change order requests. Minuet 1, change order 002, dated July 7, 2020 for $17,609, an increase to the guaranteed maximum price drawdown on owner's contingency. And Minuet 2, change order 002A, dated July 7, 2020, resulting in a zero increase to the guaranteed maximum price drawdown on existing GMP allowances. I have asked Walter to provide us with a crisp overview as to the reasoning of both as you all know we've had conversations about this uh seeking to limit any change orders but there are at times uh, actual changes in the field that make more sense even if they cost uh, a few dollars and they are not as the result of 
of someone missing a point. Uh, Walter, would you like to provide a crisp overview before I will open it up to the committee for any questions? Absolutely. Uh, so change order two in the amount of 17,609, uh, that represents about 0.4% uh, of the owner's contingency and represents about 0.02% of the GMP, the 72,640,605. Uh, uh, change order two is made up of two PCOs, PCO 03R1. It's some HVAC scope uh, revisions due to two ASIs. Uh, these were results of coordination with uh, the project team, the MEP. It's a coordination process that lasts, you know, two or three months in the beginning of the project, uh, making sure the MEP runs are correct. Uh, these were worked around stairwells. Uh, we added some fire department access doors following review with Shrewsbury Fire, uh, some additional fire dampers so that they'll be able to uh, locate all of those as well. Um, Additionally, there was an upsize in the gymnasium return grills and coordination with the reflected ceiling plan. Um, they, they need to be resized in order to meet the HVAC needs in the gym. So that's just the cost of the larger size of, of those. Uh, the second PCO, PCO8, was uh, door hardware modifications and changes. Uh, that was reflected in ASI 031 as well as their submittal package. Um, we've had multiple reviews with our door hardware manufacturer and keying coordination. Uh, we needed to change hardware lock sets in order to um, currently or match what's at the schools and also to operate exactly as uh, the school building needs to operate for both the school as well as uh, safety and security. So those changes were changing out lock sets, the difference between the costs between those two, as well as adding some tactile hand strips on certain levers and changing one hollow metal door to a, me, a stainless steel frame. Um, the only uh, additional man hours on those were four hours for uh, uh, the additional hardware uh, that we added um, a little bit more install time. Do um, you want me to go right into PCO2, uh, change order 2A? Why don't we just hold here for a moment. Sean Brennan from the Architects, any comments, questions? No, I think Walter covered it well uh, in characterizing what those changes were. Very good. Keith and Baldinger, you're going to have to live with this. What are your thoughts to the two changes? Um, I have no issues. I've been involved through, through the whole process, so I'm, I'm good with them. Okay, great. Thank you. Any comments or questions from the members of the building committee on Minuet 1? Not hearing any. Would you please proceed with 2? Two? 2A, two yes. Uh, change order 2A, as noted, is a $0 change to the GMP. So all four of these PCOs were captured within the GMP. Uh, they're reflective of multiple ASIs. Um, I think you all remember when we were buying out the project, we purchased uh, the site work and the hazmat and demo and abatement uh, at the 60% drawings and then steel uh, and concrete at the 90% drawing. So all of these adjustments were reflected when Fontaine uh, created the GMP package and, and that was reviewed with Fontaine, PMA, LPA in the town. Um, so there's uh, drawdowns on allowances <clears throat> and as well as holds uh, on these. Um, but again, not a change to any type of scope. Um, these are all things that were anticipated and you know this is kind of the inner workings of a GMP. It's really just, um, it's not a change in uh, the funding, it's just an authorization to expend the funds because we, we captured them as holds or allowances. Great, thank you very much. Comments from the architect? Uh, no, nothing further to add. Mr. Baldinger? Nothing to add. Very good. Any comments or questions from the committee? Not seeing any or hearing any, I should say. Uh, is there a desire to move forward? If I could have a motion on this to approve both as explained. I'll make a motion uh, for the committee to approve change order two and change order two A uh, with a total increase of $17,609 drawdown from the owner contingency. I'll second that. We have a second. I second that. Thank you, Mr. Cox. 
uh, under these operating conditions, I'll now call a roll call. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Baldinger? Yes. Mr. Mizikov? Yes. Mr. Girardi? Yes. Dr. Soya? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Boucher? Yes. Mr. Kane, I will now move on to 3AB, review and act on the following bills, schedules, and warrants. The vendor expense item and amount. Fontaine Brothers Incorporated requisition number 17 for $4,690,863. LPAA in, in, Incorporated, excuse me. Invoice 1717-2006 for $69,545. PMA Consultants, LLC, invoice 04110-34 for $77,967.33. Comments or questions from the committee? Not hearing any, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to uh, approve the payment of the bills as outlined in the agenda. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor shall signify by saying aye. Mr. Cox. Aye. Mr. Baldinger. Aye. Mr. Mizikar. Aye. Mr. Girardi. Aye. Dr. Sawyer. Aye. Mr. K, uh, excuse me, I get confused. Mr. Collins. Aye. Ms. Boucher. Aye. Mr. Kane, aye. Moving on to item four. Here reports, review, and acts on the following matters. A report from the owner's project manager. Well, I'll jump into, Hello? Um, I'll jump into the budget summary that was sent to everybody. Um, Great, thank you. So the budget summary, the, the new uh, total project budget based on the PFA bid amendment number one, dated July 1, 2020, is 92,000,159. That's basically a delta from the PFA budget of $800,000. That's um, a saving, a bid savings from execution of the GMP. Um, all of the Contracts remain the same as they were last month for the architect, the OPM, and the CMR. So for total, so invoices cost through June, 34,600,785, which leaves us a balance to finish of 57,401,374. Encumbered to date, including um, miscellaneous invoice, the cost of the land, builders, rifts, et cetera, is 83,942,585 leaving us a uh, budget, uh, total project budget remaining of 8,059,475.74. Um, to date, we have submitted pro pay amounts of 29,765,388, 7, we've received reimbursement from the MSBA of 10,143,934. We currently have an open pending propay reimbursement submission number 24 that we submitted on June 30th. Hard copy went to the MSBA on the 6th of July. We're expecting a reimbursement of 1,648,395 on that. And that that is the um, summary of the budget summary. Great, thank you very much. Uh, would you please be ready on our August meeting to just give us the updated balance in the owner of the owner's contingency and the GMP allowances? Yes. Uh, Thank you very uh, much. Can Are I there jump any comments in? or questions? Jim, can I jump in there on the allowances? Um, the of allowances. Course, that, yeah. So we can uh, the GMP con uh, the contingent the owner's contingency we can absolutely do um, what we have for a breakdown we can give the detailed breakdown it's it's multiple lines for the allowances and the holds um, and we should be very close to all those buyouts um, but the way we track that on the GMP contingency so CM holds and allowances is in one large bucket um, so we can we can do the full breakdown or we can do 
the um, kind of the high level summary of the GMP contingency allowances and hold as, as one item as well. Why don't you give us the high level and then we'll see if members find it interesting enough that they'd like to drill down. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Are there any comments or questions regarding 4A, the report of the owner's project manager? Mr. Kane, this is Hearing. Uh, Captain Mezzacar. <clears throat> yes. I just had, just had a question. I was wondering if Walter or Deb might just take two minutes to kind of moving beyond the numbers, give a little color commentary about where we are. And if they want to wait till the next meeting, that's fine. But just a little bit more than the numbers, you know, how do we see the project? Are we where we thought we were, would be, are we better? Are we worse? Absolutely. Um, Deb, feel free to jump in if I miss anything. Um, I would say we are construction schedule wise, exactly where we thought we'd be. I would say quality of workmanship is, um, you know, I have a very high expectation of Fontaine, but they are exceeding that. And it's, uh, you know, everyone that's come to the site or seen the site notes that as well. The cleanliness the, and the quality of workmanship is just, it's higher than your, your standard 149 uh, hard bid job. Um, design drawings, um, I can't say enough, you know, just the fact that we are at 0.04% change orders, it, it's, mm -hmm. that speaks to the quality of the drawings. Um, so, I am very, very pleased with where the project's at. Um, and again, we will provide that update, which is gonna show the savings that Fontaine has been able to provide the town through the buyout process. Um, you don't always get that through a CM, but they have done a great job. Um, and and you know that night, the bid savings that Deb mentioned where the total project budget was reduced by that 800,000, um, the there will be additional savings on top of that through the buyout process that will be recognized at the end of the project. Um, so that's just that, the, you know, you don't get the satisfaction until that final um, change order, which tends to be a credit, but um, we can, we can keep you aware. We have four buyout packages left. So very happy overall. Is that what you're looking for, Kevin? And Deb, if you got anything else, sorry. That sums it up. Really it well. is what I was looking for. I appreciate that. And I will just be reaching out to the OPM team to talk about, you know, our future borrowing obligations to get us through the end of the project. I know we're about um, five months or so away from our original plan, second borrowing in January, but we just want to make sure that we understand um, as we get closer to that date, we need to access the market, what we'll need to do. Absolutely. That's all I have. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, we can now move on to 4B, a report from our architect. Uh, good evening. Um, I uh, wanted to share my screen with you guys also. I have a few things to... Um, so just make sure I don't make anything go go crazy over here, but I think, I think I'll get it. So uh, the building uh, department uh, has been great in keeping up with the drone flyovers. Um, are you guys actually seeing my drone? Flyover? Yep, we can see it. Okay, just got to get it to play. Um, so in the in the background, we have been um, working on quite a few things, uh, and I'm going to touch on those before we get into this video. Uh, so we've really gotten close to finalizing all the interior selections. We've made the major color selections for all of the flooring materials. Uh, we hope to share a plan of that next month to give you guys a little more um, kind of visual interest as far as that goes. Uh, but that's been that process has been going well. Um, F, F, and E refinement uh, has been going really well. We've met with multiple stakeholders um, in the town to review certain items, uh, really refinement more than anything. We've gotten uh, some preliminary kind of budget numbers and, and we're right where we hope to be uh, as far as FF and E procurement goes. Um, we also have an update um, in some respects, not a visual update, but an update the mural. Uh, we have seen some better schematics uh, come out of um, the artists uh, wheelhouse and and we're very excited we're hopeful that we'll have something next month to share visually so you can get a sense of what that's really going to be looking like and then lastly uh we've 
been tracking all of our lead credits uh, for our final lead submission. Uh, for those of you who know, lead is the accrediting board. Uh, it's required that you meet the basic lead credentials for the project to receive MSBA funding. Uh, right now, we are actually trending to receive more credits than we originally targeted. So we're excited to kind of report on that. Um, but from there, uh, the one other item that happened on site since then is we asked um, Fontaine to do a mock-up of a typical classroom. And the town uh, stakeholders from the building department, uh, building inspectors department, um, the IT department from the town, Trish, Chris Girardi, Pat Collins, several uh, uh school district members made themselves available and we all went out and walked what a typical classroom will look like uh which covers about two-thirds of the classrooms the rest are uh k kindergarten classrooms which we hope to set up a meeting in the coming weeks to review that uh it was very fruitful we got to look at everything get confirmation of the mounting heights of marker boards uh location emergency call switches, just to really give them a good overall sense of how everything functions. So it was great to really have all those stakeholders there and we thank them all for making that available. Um, but one thing I wanna point out on this flyover is if, if you look at the beginning there, the, uh, the pavement. Now, ironically, this was shot just before everything got through, but you will see uh, in the flyover where you really start to get a good sense of where all the roads are gonna lay out. Uh, we're approaching from the south. We just came in over the soccer field. You're seeing the courtyard there um, outside the media center. And now we're looking north. Uh, Sherwood's actually in the distance if you got a really sharp eye there. And then as you're seeing here, you can start to see the kind of elliptical eye shape of the front parking lot. That's where the majority of all the staff and visitors will park as they come in. You see the entry road that it comes in on the left, sweeps around the site. That's where parents will pick, come in, come around the building, and they'll come into that uh, paved play area you're kind of seeing um, just over the wing to the right. And they'll loop around there and then head back out the way they came. Um, very similar to Sherwood, we kind of have these neighborhoods, common rooms. Uh, every wing culminates in a large uh, kind of interstitial corridor that kind of really just becomes a big, large gathering space. Uh, we have an overhead projector in there for students. And you can really start to see, and then every academic wing has its own to the exterior. As you know, we have some really great planned exterior learning spaces in this uh, school. Uh, one of them we just looked past was where they're all, they're, each grade level is going to have their own kind of community garden space. And they can go out and learn about gardening, uh, the presentation table out there, going around to the main entrance. Uh, what's in the front left part of the building is the kitchen and surgery, main administrations to the right of that main lobby. You start to see that unifying piece uh, that we talked about that goes through the main lobby and carries right out the back of the media center. Uh, what's coming into the foreground here, now this is the K-Wing, direct grade access to a pay, uh, playground area where all those stacked insulation materials you're seeing right now, that's where the kindergarten playground will be. And then what you're seeing in the darker in the area is the bio swale to help with storm water management on site. Uh, we have a couple of different bio swales on site. And as you're coming around to the back, you really start to see how that me media center is going to present itself and it, it kind of how it kind of hugs and hangs over a lower portion of the building, which are the two art rooms. And they really just kind of open up and embrace this cord uh, courtyard that looks out to the west. So uh, I hope you all are just excited as we are to see all this come to to form and come to fruition. Uh, it, it's it's really getting there. Uh, another matter of point is that Fontaine's billings are about 38 percent of the projects. So as you can see, that's it's pretty comparable to what you're seeing in in the project now, where you know almost 40 percent um, complete. Uh, especially with the pavement in there now. I, I, I highly recommend anyone who has an opportunity to go take a ride through the site. It, it's a fun, exciting time to really see how it all is laid out. Um, I'm not going to narrate through the last 45 seconds, but if anyone has any questions, I'll open it up. Any comments or questions for the project architect? Okay, thank you very much, John. Report from the construction manager, Fontaine. Good evening. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes, Frank. Okay. Yeah, every, as uh, Sean and Walter had said, every, everything is going as expected. 
Uh, Sean kind of commented on the uh, interior inspections that we did last week. Those are really helpful. That avoids us sheetrocking everything and then having to go back because something's not in the right place or somebody wanted something moved. Uh, Patty made herself available immediately and we were able to move that right along. Um, site work is, is ongoing, as Sean mentioned, the, the binders going down. The site contractor will be working on granite curbing next, uh, followed by spreading the loam. And we want to time that so the second week of August, we'd like to be putting uh, the hydro seed down on the, the barn lot and the, uh, the sloped area uh, to get that established. Um, the interior concrete is all done. They're, they're just doing some uh, finishing touches. Um, we will be focused now, once the granite goes in, we'll be having the site con the con concrete contractor focused on sidewalks to try to establish that. Um, the masonry has landed on a site. As far as the exterior envelope of the building, the masonry is on site. They're doing precast. Metal panels are starting. The roof is 90% done. Uh, we have containers of metal windows on site. So in short order, we'll have that building enclosed. Um, we are working on the inside with uh, the drywall contractor. He's putting up metal studs and drywall. All mechanical disciplines are in full tilt. We have HVAC, plumbing, electrical, sprinkler. Um, they're moving right along. Um, trying to think what else we have to, to tell you that everything is, is going as anticipated. We have our bumps and bruises every day. That's nature of construction. It's just a series of solving problems. Uh, but things are going uh, very well, and we're very pleased. Very good. Thank you, Frank. Are there any particular items coming up in the months ahead that you are uh, focused on and concerned about? Not concerned. Focus. We want to get the, the building enclosed. I'm thinking about heat for the upcoming winter, although it's, you know, not in 100 degrees the last couple of days. Um, trying to figure out what's the best way of tackling the heat for the project as far as propane tanks or we use the natural gas that's available. Um, so we're kind of sorting that out behind the scenes. Hmm, very good. Comments or questions from members of the committee? Mr. Kane, I did have a couple, if I could, it's, uh, Pat Collins. Yes, go ahead, Patrick, of course. So I'm wondering uh, if someone, maybe Frank, could just elaborate a little bit more on the winter conditions uh, beyond the heat and, and lighting. And uh, is that still kind of in the works in terms of how to continue construction on the interior during the colder winter months? And then oh, secondly, I just, yeah. I haven't probably been uh, up to date with respect to the uh, exterior mock-up and how things were coming together with the integration of uh, the bricks. And I know there was a question about brick supply and sizes with integration of windows and metal panels and how that's all coming along. It's all coming along well. We were on the phone late into the night, Friday night, getting brick and from North Carolina. That was the only thing with COVID-19 that has really been on our radar. Uh, the brick comes from North Carolina, high uh, concentration of the coronavirus in North Carolina. Uh, so getting the brick has been a challenge, but it started to roll in last week and we got another load Monday and that'll just start to keep coming in. Um, as far, I'm, I don't know if I quite understood your, your first part of your question, Pat. As far as we will be heating the inside of that building in some way, shape or form to continue with construction through the winter because we'll have to for a drywall application for interior finish you, you, when you put no work in a building it you just can't put it in a cold building so we we have visions budget for that we just have to figure out what the best way to tackle that is so we're we're meeting with uh uh temp air people that that specialize in that type of activity thank you and, and the lighting and electrical do you work off the permanent systems that have been installed or are those, are those also temporary permanent systems that are not the permanent lights, but the temporary lights that we have. Thank you. Yep. 
Any other comments or questions? Not hearing any. Thank you very much for the thorough update. Uh, moving on to item five, our next meeting, now that we've moved to the fourth Tuesday of the month, I have is August 25th. I will ask that Val take us out through the end of this calendar year and the next agenda so that uh, people can ensure that they're planning all the way uh, out to uh, through the holidays. If there aren't any other matters to come before the committee, then I would uh, accept a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor shall signify by saying aye. Mr. Cox. Aye. Mr. Baldinger. Aye. Mr. Carr. Aye. Mr. Girardi. Aye. Dr. Sawyer. Sawyer. Sorry about that. Aye. Mr. Collins. Aye. Ms. Boucher. Aye. Mr. Kane. Aye. Uh, thank you all very much. We stand adjourned until 6 o'clock on the fourth Tuesday of August, which I have as the 25th. Thank you all thank very you. much. Enjoy your summer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.